In today's YouTube video, what we are gonna discuss are three common movement mistakes that are actually really hurting developing discus throwers. And the first thing that we wanna talk about and what we're really gonna be the focus of this video is cleaning up movement. And especially as we get down to that championship time of the season, and whether you're a, a youth gonna be doing summer track or you're a high school student and you're coming up to a league or a state or an area or district or a regional or whatever it is, we want to be able to clean up movement so that we can get better consistent throws when crunch time comes. So the first thing that we tend to see with beginning throwers that we want to get rid of is the is the multi wind, right? You're seeing this type of stuff, this type of stuff. Okay, so we see all this multi wind and what you're going to notice is when you look at world class throwers, let's take a peek at somebody like Frederick Dockers, Daniel Stahl, or Guzdias is a perfect example. Very controlled movement. If you look at Robert Harding, again, lots of big movement, really dynamic, awesome total movement, gets right into it though. The key thing is you don't see throwers winding back and forth obsessively. So new throwers are doing wind, 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 short okay and in some cases some athletes can get into a rhythm and hit an okay throw but for the most part it's a lot of wasted energy and when you get into a championship meet that type of multi wind and extra movement is going to lead to inefficient positions and here are three reasons why it's bad number one when we get athletes that are winding back and forth they're creating hip rotation usually with shoulder rotation and the point of the wind up is to be able to create separation to create stretch reflex. That's one of the things we talk about in the throwing chain reaction. So if we can't get the shoulders separated from the hips, if we're moving the hips and shoulders together on a multi-wind, we're going to have too much movement and we're missing the point of what the windup is to be able to get the discus behind and create stretch reflex in the start and then to be able to recapture that tension in the middle of the ring, which we call pillar four five. So the, the second mistake is overwinding, turning the feet or turning the foot with the discus. And when we see this kind of too much movement, we sometimes can't get back around and you're gonna see that with a lot of young throwers. And then there's a disconnect and you're losing the stretch reflex and the right type of tension that you're supposed to have on the throw. So if you look at most of the elite throwers in the world, are there a few that do turn their foot a little bit more? There sure are. So you look at somebody like Matt Denny of Australia, he's a lot more dynamic. However, he does hit a point where he has excellent separation and stretch reflex, which allows him to come to what we refer to as pillar two, and he hits a great pillar two position, which is going to allow him to drop into the throw and apply speed, pillar three. But he's kind of an exception to the rule. Again, if you're looking at all the top throwers in the world, even in the men's shot put, you don't see a lot of excess motion of that entry side foot. And on the windup, that's what you're going to see with beginning throwers. So item number one is the multi -wind moving the hips too much and that kind of thing. And then item number two is too much left foot rotation on their wind. And then we're gonna go into what we call as one of the mistakes again, young throwers make. It's reversing the orbit. We talked about this in our sector foul video, but this is a common mistake. One of the things we have to do is when we set up and we're trying to control motion, we're trying to control the path of the left arm. The left arm's function is to help generate speed and it helps counterbalance as the throw moves through and it's counterbalancing the implement and we have to have the right orbit path to move into the throw. So one of the big mistakes that I see with a lot of throwers is the high arm. And as soon as that arm comes up, we tend to get this which affects the orbit in a negative way and now they're coming through and this is going to lead to sector fouls. It's gonna to lead to having them pull off. But most importantly, if I was throwing, let's say this direction, and I came through and my arms up here, my shoulders come behind my hips and I come off and I'll pull and I'll pull off the delivery leg. So when you combine the multi-wind 
and you combine the over foot rotation and the left arm off, you have the trifecta of one of the things that absolutely sabotages technical development and we don't want you to do that. So, couple key things. Let's try to get yourself back to a simple one, two, three position. Stay more center. We want to clean up the movement. We don't want to have excessive wind even though you see throwers who get really far back. Again, looking at somebody like Malachowski, look at him. He has a very dynamic looking wind and he has a, an amazing job of how he moves into the throw, but you don't see that over rotated left foot. And again, you're going to notice where the path of the arm and those things that I just pointed out, you're going to see that he doesn't do those things and he's extremely efficient. Why he's one of the greatest throwers in the history of the sport. So this is one of the common things you see across the board. So the sooner you learn to get rid of all this excess movement and wasted motion, the faster you're going to throw farther. So hopefully this again helps you out. The goal here is always to help throwers and coaches. There's such a lack of coaches around the country in our sport. People show up and go and they have no background or history and we're hoping to help them too. Be sure to throw a comment below, give us a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and we will see you on the next video.